This is Powering the Future, a podcast series brought to you by Smart Grid Forums. One planet, one power grid. Hello, everyone. As renewables grow, so does the need for grid flexibility partnerships. But how exactly are utilities laying the foundations for these? Joining us today to discuss this is Davide Dallagistina, Head of Business Development and Transformation Officer at A2A. Hi, Davide. Welcome back. Hello, Manzana. Nice to be again with you today. Fantastic. Great to have you back, Davide. So we talked about renewables integration last week. And what I'd like to explore in a bit more detail is another hot topic, and that is a flexibility partnerships. I'd like to find out what you're doing at A2A in terms of preparing yourselves for a more flexible future. Yeah, we, we for instance, just, just give you an example. We are participating uh, to a pilot project about the flexibility. So at distribution system level, there isn't a market already in place. We are still testing uh, with those pilot uh, phase, uh, which has been promoted by our local um, authority uh, within a cell box regulation. So basically several DSO in Italy, they are performing their project by engaging real customer which agreed to participate to this flexibility program. So the idea is uh, after an agreement with this uh, customer, we can call them by last service uh, provider. Uh, we, they reserve a certain amount of capacity, of flexibility capacity. And when we have critical issue of the network, we engage them so they can remodulate their loads or production to help us in solving a situation, uh, a critical situation. Yeah. Okay, great. Tell us a bit about the vision for flexibility. So what the end goal is, as far as you can, you can see it right now, and what your first steps, your first few milestones are going to look like in practical terms. Yeah, w what I expect for the future is there will be a local flexibility market. When I say local, I mean at a distribution level, because of course, at transmission level, there is already a market in place. Uh, uh, the novelty here is uh, to try to apply similar concept at distribution level. And um, so we expect that this will come uh, in a few years, uh, especially because uh, as we commented at the last time, uh, the share of renewable is increasing. Uh, they represent an opportunity, but they brought about uh, also complexity. So the flexibility is also a way to exploit, better exploit those DERs. Okay. Um, in terms of what those flexibility partnerships are going to mean for you, um, what are the sort of relationship aspects that you need to put in place in order to work with a more diverse ecosystem than you have in the past? I believe there are two levels. Um, as you said, relational levels in terms of different entities in the electricity supply chain, let's say. So uh, with this local market, there will be the creation of uh, a new market for the distribution. Uh, there is a new connection in between those uh, balanced responsible parties and uh, balanced service provider, we can call them, and the DSO, which was not there uh, till one year ago, at least in our case, even if it's a pilot fate, we, we now have this kind of relation mediated by the market, but it's there. Uh, so there is a new connection between two, two bodies in electricity supply chain. From the other perspective, there is a technological challenge uh, in the sense that you have to create new data flows among those bodies uh, because there will be a no direct uh, connection between the uh, DSO and those customers that will be mediated by a market platform. So... What we are also studying now is to try how we can implement this kind of data exchange. And furthermore, if we remain in more in the DSO domain, also in the last um, time we met, we discussed about algorithms. Uh, I also quickly went through the state estimation and state forecast, which are algorithms which help us in determine if there will be a congestion 
In that case, we can engage flexibility to mitigate the congestion. So that's the bridge, let's say. And we are uh, investing a lot of airport also in studying those algorithms that remind their accuracy and see in, in the practical small scale pilot uh, how they do the work. One of the really core technologies which is really taking off and people are very excited about is energy storage. And at the moment, I understand the grid operators are obliged to work through third party providers to access storage. In future, that might change. What are your thoughts on the sort of regulatory and commercial aspects of storage and how utilities can fully leverage that? Yeah, it's, it's a complex answer because when you say utility, there are different subjects with different interests, uh, someone more oriented to the market and someone more on the infrastructure. So f from my point, from my perspective as a DSO, I would say that uh, what I expect is a larger prosumer, which provide flexibility, uh, can also combine uh, local generation with storage in order to be more programmable, let's say, and to interact easily, to be able to to respond to customer in, to DSO incentives when there is an issue on the network. So I see that uh, the storage it's a key technology. It will be a key technology for the future, uh, but for sure. Um, it, it, at least for sure they will be part of the prosumer domain and we can interact with them. I don't expect on the short term at least that uh, the regulation will be changed so much and we directly will be directly able to install and control uh, uh, storage. Yeah, and, and then we have also to think of uh, electric vehicles because if you think of that, basically they are a small storage unit moving along our cities. So I also expect that um, uh, customer dealing with infra uh, recharge infrastructure for el electric vehicles could participate to flexibility market at distribution level. So there is another way of using storage without a standalone storage device. Yes. Yeah, vehicle to grid is also sounds like a very dynamic and exciting market opportunity. But just going back to storage, Davide, one thing um, that occurs to me is that it feels from the outside that you that grid operators should be able to invest in their own storage uh, systems in order to manage congestion and to sort of deal with those uh, fluctuations introduced by renewables. Um, what is the rationale behind the regulators saying you can't own that technology, you have to, um, you have to procure the service? Yeah, the, the point is uh, uh, there is only one body in charge of dispatching that is balancing the demands and the generation. And uh, I would say in Europe in general, in, in Italy for sure, is the transmission system operator. So if the DSO own its own storage with a large capacity, they create an imbalance in this mechanism. So that's the original reason. Um, that, that, that's, that, that's idea. Right, okay. I think some grid operators are ready to challenge that decision, though. Uh, can you see the other side of it? Can you see a case for uh, uh, utilities being able to invest in their own storage systems in the future if we're able to challenge that decision? I would say that there could be some specific... So it's a matter of cost-benefit analysis at the end for the system. So there could be some... Uh, cases maybe in rural area where it's too expensive to is to cable to lay down long cables, create primary substation or whatever uh, for a smaller number of customer. So in this scenario, it could make sense maybe to have small storage unit for that specific purpose. But in other condition, uh, it, it has to be proved that the use of storage is less expensive that. Uh, uh, reinforcing the network. So, I mean, I don't have um, an overall answer, but I really believe that also as a citizen that uh, every decision should be um, taken after a careful analysis of the cost bench. Now, going back to vehicle grid, uh, to grid, as you mentioned, um, uh, you know, potentially this could add a lot of um, electricity back into the grid. This could be a really rich source of electricity coming back in 
what are the complexities for the grid in terms of allowing the injection of that sort of power into the grid in that very distributed way? Yeah, the complexity is similar to the one we discussed with uh, renewable energy sources. Uh, uh, recharging stations are scattered along a very medium low voltage grid in different places. So what you need is uh, to have a clear understanding where they are located, what's their consumption, what's their profile. Get this information, combine everything together with the topology of the network, see what's the condition that specific moment, and then understand uh, what's the best time and if it's necessary or not to activate this kind of flexibility. So um, so the complexity is uh, represented by the fact that they are scattered and they are mainly connected at low voltage level. As we discussed the last time, it's a level of the distribution network with less sensor, less control capabilities. And so you have to leverage on algorithms to make an estimation before taking a decision. So that's the major complexity. My final question is around cybersecurity. This is, of course, um, always a challenge for you know any level of innovation in the grid, um, but with so many new um, partners in the grid now through flexibility, what are the new cybersecurity considerations that grid operators need to take seriously today to prepare properly for tomorrow? Yeah, I, I believe cybersecurity is extremely important. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, there are a lot of regulation in Europe, but I believe that uh, they are necessary uh, for the sake of the stability of the system. You know, the electricity network uh, is uh, providing an es essential service to the citizen. So when you have large blackout events or even minor blackout events, there are a lot of issues for the population, for hospitals and transportation and whatever. So to make your network cyber resilient, it's a very hot topic and an important uh, issue. So I believe that uh, we at least, we are devoting a lot of time to, uh, to invest in solution and uh, to have a proper framework to deal with it. Okay, great. Well, Davide, thank you so much again for your time and insights again, on flexibility. Another hot topic for the grid. Great to know where uh, you personally and also your organization stand on this. We look forward to seeing you at um, SGT26 in Paris. Thank you so much. For sure. Thanks again. Thank bye, Amanda. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Davide. Join us again next week as we unpack another big topic shaping the future of the power grid. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Smart Grid Forums, and follow us on LinkedIn. Until then, thanks for watching and listening. This is Powering the Future, a podcast series brought to you by Smart Grid Forums. One planet, one power grid.